What do the Morbius trailers references to Spider-Man Homecoming and Far From Home mean for the movie and the rest of the MCU? Not as much as you're hoping it means. Readers, I'm not even gonna bore you with the trivial stuff. I thought the Morbius trailer was meh. It definitely looks like a better movie than the first Venom, don't get me wrong. But if I'm gonna be real with you, just from the trailer alone, this looks like it's gonna hit a lot of the same beats as Dracula Untold. <laughs> And this is coming from someone who genuinely enjoyed Dracula Untold and thought that they should have used that to kick off Universal Studios Dark Universe instead of the Mummy remake. If anything, the only thing that interests me about this movie is seeing how it differs from Dracula Untold. Because now that certain things have come to light about him, I honestly can't say the same thing about Jared Leto anymore. Not saying I'm not gonna watch it, not saying I'm not going to review it, just saying that I'm not really that stoked about it. But one thing's for sure, with the success of Venom, and now with the release of the first trailer for Morbius, it's clear that Sony is serious about making this live-action spider list universe work for them. Or at least, we thought it was spider man -less. Because in this trailer, we got two Easter eggs in regards to where Spider-Man stands in Sony's Spidey Rogues Gallery movies. One that's very easy to decipher. What's up, Doc? And the other, one section of the internet is thinking a bit too hard on. But before we break down the meaning of these Easter eggs and cameos, let's go over the renegotiated deal between Disney and Sony regarding the use of Spider-Man so that we can get a better understanding of what's going on. The original deal was that Sony would finance any Spider-Man solo movie for the MCU while Marvel Studios acted as story consultants, and that Disney would get 5% of the ticket revenue, thus giving birth to Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. In return, Spider-Man granted Marvel Studios permission to use him in about three Marvel Studios productions for free, which we've seen executed in Captain America Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, and Avengers Endgame. Oh, this is nice. The renegotiations, however, initially fell through because Disney are some greedy bitches and wanted more money from Sony's solo Spidey movies. Completely forgetting that Disney owns the merchandising rights to Spider-Man and basically made Sony's box office numbers for Homecoming and Far From Home and toys and backpack sales alone. But yeah, it's, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Then Tom Holland, drunk call Disney CEO Bob Iger. <laughs> convincing him to go back to negotiations with Sony, and now this new deal is born. The new deal involves Disney providing 25% of the budget for Sony's third solo Tom Holland Spider-Man movie that'll still have its story consulted by Marvel Studios to fit in with the MCU in order to receive a 25% cut of its box office earnings as opposed to the previous 5%. And in return, Sony will once again allow Spider-Man to show up in at least one more Marvel Studios production for free. Now, the reason why I felt I needed to explain that is because even though the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies are in the MCU, feature MCU characters, and have been aided by Marvel Studios to fit the MCU story-wise, they are still Sony movies at the end of the day. That's the reason why neither Homecoming or Far From Home are on Disney+, Plus, but the films from Marvel Studios that feature Spider-Man are. That's the reason why Sony recently released a movie bundle containing Homecoming, Far From Home, Into the Spider-Verse, and Venom out on Blu-ray. Despite how much Disney made from ticket sales and how much creative input was made by Marvel Studios, the MC Spider-Man movies are still the property of Sony. Which is why Michael Keaton's Vulture from Homecoming appeared in the end of the Morbius trailer. Which is why that one image of Spider-Man with the word murderer spray painted over it is carrying over the plot point from the mid credit scene from Far From Home. Despite using an image from the PS4 Spider-Man game of the character in the Raimi suit to do it. And no, just because the image is of Spidey in the Raimi suit 
doesn't mean that Morbius takes place in the Raimi universe. If anything, they're probably going to replace it with Holland Spider-Man in the actual movie. I, I, I mean, how could you actually think that when Michael Keaton's vulture is right there? <sighs> anyway, if you've seen my video back when word was get first getting around that Sony's live action villain movies would be adjacent with how Marvel Studios was shaping Spider-Man in the MCU, then you would know upon seeing the two Homecoming and Far From Home references in the Morbius trailer that they're pretty much doing what I predicted they'd be doing and using the stories Marvel Studios came up with as the backbone of how they're forming their own universe. And because the movies that are in the MCU pretty much belong to them, Sony can have characters from the MCU Spider movies that are shared with Sony and Marvel Studios show up in films like Venom and Morbius, movies that Kevin Feige has gone on record explaining that Disney and Marvel Studios have nothing to do with and probably won't even acknowledge in the canon. It'll probably be like how the Marvel Netflix shows always reference the Battle of New York in the first Avengers movie, or how the early days of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. always had tie-in episodes to recent Marvel Studios releases, but the MCU never references the events of any of those shows. They didn't do that with Venom, probably because they wanted to play it safe and see if they could get away with not needing Spider-Man to establish his character first. But clearly with Morbius, they just decided to become a Rick and Morty meme right quick. So no, the deal between Disney and Sony hasn't expanded past what has already been established. Just because the events of Homecoming and Far From Home are canon in Morbius and possibly Venom, doesn't mean that the events of Morbius and possibly Venom are canon in the MCU. And just because they used an image of Spider-Man in the Raimi suit for Morbius to tie into Far From Home doesn't mean that the movie takes place in the Raimi-verse. Jesus Christ, guys. I mean, maybe if they replaced Michael Keaton with John Malkovich in the trailer, I could see it because that's who Raimi wanted to play Vulture in Spider-Man 4, but it's not. It's Michael Keaton. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyway, readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comment section below what you initially thought when you saw the homecoming and far from home references made in the first trailer for Morbius. Or if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class, if you think Sony's strategy of making an MCU spin-off franchise with Spider-Man characters is a good idea. Whichever one you decide to answer, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee page in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101 class dismissed.